in the next few days here we've yeah. got the uh mars express and exo mars tgo are going to get the best look i think that we're going to get of it in the next week here um that's it's right. going to come within 30 million kilometers of mars yes yes or, of mars or of earth no of mars it will not come close to earth but there is also nasa's uh, mars reconnaissance uh, orbiter that has a, a perhaps the best camera uh, called high rise that will be able to capture uh, an image of uh, 3i atlas with a pixel uh, resolution of 30 kilometers and i'm very much looking forward to that in a few days because uh, you know a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words and uh, i i don't care what uh, other people say the the picture will give us a very tight constraint on the size of the object i can already say that it's probably bigger than five kilometers um, we just uh, uh, wrote a paper about that with uh, uh, my colleagues uh, that uh, was basically using the fact that there is no evidence for non-gravitational acceleration of this this object it's basically for following a path that is dictated just by gravity perfectly for uh, about four and a half months and based on that we can say that the object is very massive because it's losing mass and you would expect uh, that its evaporation on the side that faces the sun uh, gives it a push but but we don't notice any push so that means that it's very massive and we get a lower limit on the mass of the object uh, uh, that, that is uh, about 33 uh, uh, billion tons okay that's the minimum mass of the object 33 billion tons and the, that, that corresponds to a diameter bigger than five kilometers so that's the smallest size and then it could be bigger than that it can be all the way up to 45 uh, kilometers based on other data that we have so it's a it, it's a big beast <laughs> you know it's a large animal with a, a tail coming from its forehead shedding a nickel you know i'm i'm not sure i would call it a cat or a comet uh, without getting more data and that's that's basically my point i you know, I defined a, a scale that is now called the lobe scale, where zero, a rank of zero, means a natural object, and a rank of 10 means a technological object that could be a threat to humanity. And as of now, I give it a four, but that's, um, you know, if, so most of the odds are that it's natural, but but this, this is a high rank because um, you want to have a contingency plan if, if it turns out to yeah, be technological. And- I think that that's important to note. I think with any of these extraterrestrial uh, objects or interstellar objects that you've identified over the years, you've never said this is for sure an extra extraterrestrial intelligent life form. You're saying that's just one of the things that is it could possibly be uh, of the many things that it could be. And so I think that's important to to point out, but specifically with these higher resolution images that we're going to receive here in the next week or so, hopefully, you know, wh- what do you think in your experience you'll be able to definitively say with those images? What, what will you be able to rule out and what's the, I don't know, the best case scenario you could hope for? Oh, the best case scenario is that we will have uh, a few pixels uh, resolution of this uh, object, that it's actually as big as 30 kilometers or maybe even up to 45 uh, kilometers. Uh, and then we would be able to see the object with a few pixels. Uh, However, uh, even if it's smaller than that, even if it's uh, 10 kilometers or five kilometers, we would be able to uh, know its uh, size, its diameter, because the brightest pixel uh, that in in the image will tell us how much sunlight is reflected from the object. So assuming a typical reflectance that we know of, um, we will get the, the area of the object that reflects the sunlight. Uh, the the uh, cloud of gas around it uh, is uh, transparent. We can see through it. It's just a question of getting a high resolution image so we can tell, you know, how bright is the brightest pixel. And and the previous image we had was from the Hubble Space Telescope. It was a hundred times worse than we can get from high rise. And um, I actually had a phone call from um, Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna, who wanted to know more about the 3A Atlas. And uh, I mentioned to her that NASA has access to 
uh, important assets in space that can be used to, to get more data, including uh, uh, the time when uh, 3i Atlas will pass uh, very close to uh, Jupiter. That will be March 16th, 2026. And uh, there we have the, the Juno uh, spacecraft and, and the representative Luna wrote a, a letter to uh, the current um, uh, administrator of NASA, um, uh, Sean Duffy, the, encouraging him to use uh, Juno and other facilities. So I very much hope that we will have a lot of data because, you know, that's the best way for us to learn rather than have a prejudice. And my hope is once we have a lot of data, it will become clear what the nature of this object is. And if we know how big it is, you know, uh, it would be really difficult to accommodate a, a, a giant rock that is tens of kilometers in size because it's just too massive, you know, for, for it to, to arrive to our neighborhood by, at random. That, that's based on my calculations. And I'm, when I say too, too massive, I mean by orders of magnitude, by you know, not by a factor of two, but by a factor of thousands or even millions. And um, so let's see how big it is. That's the first thing. And then, you know, we can potentially detect uh, uh, artificial light coming from it. You know, just yesterday, I realized that the direction from where this uh, three atlas is coming is very close uh, to the center of the Milky Way galaxy in, th in the sky. And it's called the Sagittarius uh, region. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it turns out that uh, on uh, August 15th, uh, 1977, there was a detection of uh, a radio signal from that direction called the WOW signal, uh, which was definitely extraterrestrial. And uh, back at the time, uh, people who were searching for intelligent civilizations through radio signals were struck by it. And it was very puzzling. Why is it coming from there? And uh, what is the source of that? But this was unresolved because since then, we never saw a signal as bright as uh, as the uh, wow signal. And uh, I just realized last night that it came within uh, a, a distance of uh, nine degrees from the direction of 3A Atlas. So, so that's uh, really a coincidence. Uh, and, and also the velocity that was inferred for the source was of all the 10 kilometers, because we could see it, it was a narrow band signal of uh, very close to the hydrogen line and it was blue shifted as if the source is moving at 10 kilometers <laughs> per second. And actually, 3i Atlas is moving towards the, the sun at about 60 kilometers per second. So you would have gotten a, a, a blue shifted signal. Uh, I calculated that the, back in 1977, 3i Atlas was at a distance of 600 times the Earth-Sun separation. So it was far. It's about... Um, three um, uh, light days. And so um, you needed, in order to get the signal that was detected, the brightness of it, the intensity of it, uh, the, the, the source had to have um, a power of about a, a gigawatt, uh, which is uh, the typical power that a nuclear reactor on Earth has. So in, in terms of technology, it's, it's possible that uh, the wow signal that was uh, enigmatic since 1977 came from roughly the same direction. And I encouraged um, um, uh, radio observers to look at 3i Atlas and, and check whether it has any radio transmission, you know, which so far they haven't done so. That nothing was reported. But given that the wow signal came from the same direction in the sky, I would encourage them to take data before we lose uh, 3i Atlas.